but say we don't want to empower those neighborhood groups because they don't really represent everybody. They tend to be one kind of people. So we try to think, how do we help groups think about how they can become more inclusive? And try to think about who's most excluded. We thought that probably the people with intellectual disability. The people who have been institutionalized for years, living outside of our neighborhoods, increasingly being deinstitutionalized, living in our neighborhoods, in group homes, with family members, in our neighborhoods, but not in our community. Part of a service system, not in our community. So we started a program called Involving All Neighbors. And we put together what we called the Action and Community Team. And it was made up of individuals with intellectual disabilities and their family members, people who wanted to become more included in community life, and neighborhood activists who wanted to create more inclusive organizations. We worked from both ends to connect those individuals with communities, community associations. Here are a couple of stories. Matt, this is Matt. Matt and his mom came to see me, and Matt says, I've been living in the Ravenna neighborhood now for eight years. I don't know anybody. I said, Matt, what do you like about your neighborhood? He took me to Ravenna Creek. He said, I love the creek. I knew the Neighborhood Association was working to clean up the creek to make a better salmon habitat. So I talked to Thomas, who was head of the association. I said, Thomas, could you involve Matt in your project? He said, yeah, we can always use more volunteers. So they trained Matt how to remove the invasive plants and how to reforest with native plants. And it wasn't long before Matt became the expert. And he was leading to work parties teaching everybody else how to remove the invasive holly. But Matt's greatest gift, he's got this incredibly infectious personality. So he comes and he knocks on your door, he says, hi, I'm Matt. I really care about the salmon, don't you? <laughs> You'll help me, won't you? You can't say no to the guy. He is the number one volunteer recruiter in the neighborhood. That's his gift. And he's incredibly creative. At Christmas time, he organizes a holiday party. And the neighbors go and they collect all the invasive holly from along the creek. They make Christmas decorations. Everybody goes back to his house afterwards for a big party. And he's totally socially uninhibited, so he's always the first one out the dance floor. He helps everybody else break out of their shells. That's his gift. He builds community like nobody else. Susan Harmon on the right-hand side. Susan's chair of the Westwood Neighborhood Association. She wanted to create a more inclusive association. So she worked with our Department of Social and Health Services and said, could you offer your, uh, could you send a letter to your clients? And the letter basically said, hi, I'm Susan, I'm chair of the Neighborhood Association, would love to get you involved. If you're interested, give me a call. Mm -hmm. So she got a call from Raven and Ginger. She went to their house. They said, we've been living here 20 years. We don't know any of our neighbors. She looked around the walls and the inside of that house, and there were all these crafts on the walls. And some of them had a clown theme. And Susan said, what's with that? And, and they said, well, that's how we spend our time. We make crafts. And Raymond here used to be Rayto the Clown, but he hasn't clowned in over 20 years. Susan said, we're having our Delridge Community Festival on Saturday. Could you come down and do some clowning for us? He was so excited. He and uh, Susan, he and Ginger dug through his boxes, finally found his clown outfit. Susan picked him up Saturday morning. He was the hit of the festival. The kids loved him. They started inviting him to kids' birthday parties, to other community events. In the process, he and Ginger met other people who did craft work. They started getting rides to craft festivals so they could sell their crafts and made friendships. Susan said that Raymond and Ginger opened doors for her in that neighborhood like nobody else had been able to. And finally, here's Larry. Larry, as you can see, has a disability that makes him totally dependent on public transit. So Larry knows the bus system better than anybody else in this Capitol Hill neighborhood. Larry knows all the places the bus goes, he knows all the places the bus should go, but doesn't go. He knows all the places where there should be covered bus shelters, where there should be better security lighting. So when the neighborhood did their neighborhood plan, bottom-up plan, they tapped Larry to help with the transportation element. And Larry led a walking tour of the business district, pointing out all the access problems. Because they weren't just a problem for Larry, they were a problem for parents with their strollers, elders with their walkers. Larry became so highly valued, he was elected vice chair of the Capitol Hill Community Council. Somebody with developmental disabilities, somebody that's seen as a person with nothing but needs, is now a leader in his community because they've thought to lift off that label. There's incredible untapped resources in our community. And finally, it's about having a new leadership style that too many community leaders replicate the style of the elected officials that we're critical of. 
where we want to grab all of the power for ourselves, where we want to do everything, where we're the spokespeople for the community. The real leader creates more leaders. My friend Henry Moore says we need to lead by stepping back. That no one person has all the gifts we need to build community, but collectively we've got everything we need. It's like stone soup. The iron rule of community organizing that I was trained is never do for people what they can do for themselves. So the role of the community leader is to help identify the gifts everybody else has and about how do we best build on those. How do we find a role for everybody in the community? Because no one person can do it alone. And I love this quote. When the best leaders work is done, the people will say, we did it ourselves. 